is having the Son to our Savior and to the Holy Spirit. I want to thank all of the people who are responsible today for aiding us in this presentation and this production. A little bit of information we would like to pass on to all of our listeners and to all of the audience and all of those who are members of the New Jerusalem Church and abroad. We want you to know, uh, we want to give you a bit of information to let you know that this telecast, this live feed will be available in three markets. You'll be able to go to our web page, njbctyler.org, uh, or you'll be able to go to the uh, YouTube site, or you will also be able to have access to the um, Facebook page, Facebook page. And so today we want you to thank you for tuning in, and we ask that you with all the time while we are presenting this, we ask that you would be in prayer for us, that God will guide us and lead us through this presentation. Uh, before we get started, I want to start with a word of prayer if we could. So if all of you that are listening, if you'll take a moment to just bow your heads and let's talk to God about His goodness and His mercy. Eternal God, our Father, we come today on this Wednesday of this week thanking you for a life, health, and strength. We come, God, to say thank you even in the midst of our situation, our crisis situation, and these fluid times and these ever-changing times, times that we are unaccustomed to, times that we are not familiar with. But we, we know that, God, that uh, you are the same yesterday, today, and forever. And so we come even in the midst of our uh, anguish and, and in the midst of our uncertainty and even in the midst of our fear and, and our, uh, in the midst of our unsettling times. We, we want to thank you for just being who you are. Thank you for your grace and your mercy. Thank you for waking us up early this morning and starting us out on a beautiful day. Thank you for life, health, and strength. And so God has become, we, we, we acknowledge that you are uh, the only God that exists, you are the only bona fide, you're the only authentic, uh, you're the only genuine God that he is. And so we acknowledge you for your Bibles, your word says in the word that if we would acknowledge you in all our ways that you would direct our path. God, we come before you, we ask mercy, we ask for your mercy, and we ask for your grace because, Father God, we, we cannot sustain ourselves, we cannot even help ourselves, we really can't even do anything without you. And so we thank you for the aid, and we ask that you continue to guide us. And we don't quite understand, we don't quite, we haven't quite figured it out, and we know that we'll never really understand, but we know that you are in control. We acknowledge that you are in control, and we know through time that you will, you will make it clear as to what your intentions were and is. Now, Father God, we pray for all of those who are on the front line. We pray for the doctors and the nurses and the first responders, and all of those people who are laying their lives on the line that we might be healthy and we might be saved. We even pray for the members of our church who have been directly and indirectly affected by this terrible disease. Not only the members of this church, but all over the world and all over the globe. We pray, God, that you would just touch right now. We ask, oh God, that you would speak to the families of those whose uh, loved ones have died uh, out of their presence. We pray, God, that you would strengthen them and give them hope in the midst of their disparity. And we ask it all in the name of Jesus. Now, God, we just praise you right now because you're just worthy to be praised. There's none like you. And we thank you for Jesus. A few days ago, we celebrated the resurrection of our Lord and Savior. And we thank you for Jesus sending him to this wretched world that we might have the possibility and we might have the probability and we might have the likelihood that if we would accept him, that we could be saved. Now bless this presentation. Bless everything that it will be offered in this presentation. We ask it all in the precious, proud, and pronounced name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. <clears throat> Today we will come to... Today our lesson, today, again, we want to thank you for homing in on our telecast today. Today we want to be, we want to, we want to address the issue of trusting in God in hard times. And I, I think uh, by and large we all can come to agreement 
these are these are very changing times for us, and nobody nobody is an expert at this time because we've never been in a situation such as the situation that we're in today. So we want to talk about trusting God in hard times. Now, before we do that, before we go through the self the, the presentation that I have, there are some scriptures that I would like for you to know. Uh, while you uh, maybe you have your Bibles, uh, you can go to Psalm 62. And I'll give you a moment to turn to Psalm 62, and uh, I want to read uh, Psalm 62 says, uh, "Trust in the Lord, uh, trust in Him at all times, O ye people, and pour out your hearts before Him, because God is a refuge for us." And then I went to Psalms 20. And uh, I, I want to read it. It says, Some trust in chariots and some in horses, but we trust in the name of our God. Then I went to Psalms 56 and 3. It says, When I am afraid, I will put my trust in you. And then finally, to cap it all off, to summarize all of it, Proverbs 3, 5 and 6 says, Trust in the Lord with all your heart. And do not lean to your own understanding. It says, in all your ways, acknowledge him, and he will direct your path. And so today we want to talk about trusting in God in hard times. Now, I want to introduce a concept while we're trusting in God. As I was putting this presentation together, there were seven things that I found that were instrumental in me putting this together. Some seven things that I learned while I've been trusting in God in hard times. And certainly, without a doubt, these are hard times. There are hard times for everybody. Everybody is experiencing some type of hardship because of the coronavirus. And so we want to just try to encourage you today uh, by telling you the seven lessons that we've learned while trusting in God. The first lesson that we, we've, we've learned, we've learned that God is faithful. God is faithful. Uh, don't let anybody ever fool you. Don't let anybody try to uh, mislead you. We serve a God that is faithful. The, the first Corinthians 1 and 9 says, God will do this, for he is faithful to do what he says. He has invited you into the partnership with his son, Jesus Christ our Lord. So first of all, I want to tell you in the first part of this, I want you to understand that God is faithful. How do I know that God is faithful? Because the writer of 1 Corinthians 1 and 9 says that God will do this. What will God do? God will do anything that we need Him to do. Whatever that you need God to do, God is equipped, He's ready, He's able, and He's ready to do whatever is necessary. Why is, he, why is He willing to do this for us? Because he has invited us into a partnership uh, with his son. See, when we become saved, when we become, when we accept Jesus as our personal savior, he invites us into the God family and we become partners with him and his son through Jesus Christ. So the next thing we need to know, there are days, uh, I'm sure that uh, all of you that's in the audience today would agree with me, there are days that threaten to take, overtake us. But we encounter God's faithfulness. Uh, he was with us every step. He has been with us through every step uh, of everything that we've been experiencing these last this month and all ever since this virus has come. God has been with us. God has been by our side. God has been before us. God has been behind us. And that is a demonstration of his faithfulness. He was with us every step of the way through our cancer, through our through, through the burglarizing of our homes, and staff changes, new mourning, so much more. God has always been our provider, our comforter, as well as our defender. And so God is faithful. Then Numbers tells us that God is not a man. And I want to stop right there. I, I want to make sure that all of us, I, I appreciate what our government officials are doing. I, I, wanna, I appreciate what the Congress is doing. I appreciate what the Senate is doing. I appreciate what our, what our leaders are doing. But let me tell you something. One thing I've learned about man, you cannot depend on man because man is not faithful all the time. 
But God is faithful. And, 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 and Numbers 23, 19, 23 said that God is not a man. So let's first of all recognize that God is not a man. So therefore, if God is not a man, then, then God does not conduct himself as a man. And therefore, if he does not conduct himself as a man, then we can, we can count on the fact that he's faithful. Because, because 23 said, uh, 19 said that he should not lie. Now, one thing we've learned throughout this whole experience, if we would be honest with ourselves, that we've had a lot of misinformation. I don't know if it's deliberate lies, I don't know if it's constructed lies, I don't know if it's well orchestrated lies, but I don't really know, but there's a lot of misinformation. The one thing I want you to know that's crystal clear is that God is not a man. And a number said that he should lie. Neither is he, neither, neither the son of man that he should repent. But he has said he shall do, he shall not do it, and he has spoken and he shall make it good. In other words, what, what the numbers is trying to tell us is that God is a God of his word. God will do exactly what he says he will do. If he promises you something, you can count on it because every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God is the truth. Uh, the Bible teaches us that when Jesus was when Jesus was in the wilderness being tempted by the devil, the devil came to him with some stuff that was unorchestrated, and he told him, Man shall not live by bread alone. But every single word that proceeded out of the mouth of God shall man live by. So we need to understand that the first lesson is that God is faithful. Now if God had not been faithful, then there's a possibility you and I would not be in this telecast together. So God is faithful. And even in these hard times, when jobs are shutting down and so many people, and I, I pray for all of these people that have been disenfranchised and all these people that have lost their job and lost their, their income, their source of income. And let me tell you, if you might be one of those people, if you're one of those people that's listening to me and that has happened to you and that has affected you, I want you to know that even in the midst of all of that, we serve a God that can provide even in the midst of all of that. So I want you to, 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 to have faith in God. Have faith in God because God is faithful. For the Bible teaches us without faith it is impossible to please God. Because he that seeketh them must believe that he is a reward of them that diligently seek him. So what we have to do even in the midst of all of these hard times that we're going through, we must have faith in God. Amen. Somebody ought to say amen. We ought to have faith in God. Amen. And, and then the next thing we need to understand that we are never alone. Uh, I was listening just a few days ago uh, on television and there was a lady uh, that was saying that she didn't want to go home because she didn't want to be alone. And uh, these times, with all of the social distancing that we're having to do, and with all of the, the, the non-gathering for family gatherings and family reunions and all of the things that we are just accustomed to doing, the, the fellowship even in our churches and, and, and being able to fellowship with one another, uh, it makes us sometimes feel alone. But I need, I need to, everybody to know that we are never alone because no matter where we go, no matter where we situate, no matter where we take up residence, we are never alone because God has promised us that he would always be with us. Amen. It says in Deuteronomy 31 and 6 said, Be strong and courageous. Uh, do not be uh, afraid or terrified because of them. For the Lord your God goes with you and he will never leave you nor forsake you. Now, in these times when, when it's hard to depend on anybody, uh, it's good to know that we serve a God who has promised us right here in the scripture that he would never leave us alone. Okay? And so if you're feeling lonely, what I would, what I would suggest to you, if, if this is your situation, if this is your plight today, then I would, I would suggest that you would get out on your knees and have a talk with God. And, and then once you get off your knee, I would recommend that you would go to the Word of God and, and, and turn open the Word of God and you will discover Throughout the Bible, throughout the Old Testament, throughout the New Testament, you will discover that God will never leave you. So it says, be strong. You say, well, Brother Pastor, that, that sounds really good, 
uh, that sounds really, really good from saying that from this podium that you at. Uh, that sounds really good because everything may be going all right for you and everything may be falling into place for you. But my world is falling apart. My, my situation is going, it, it's in a downward spiral. Well, what I would recommend again to you is to get out on your knees and talk to God. Because there's no problem, there's no situation, there's no set of circumstances, there's no 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 dilemma, no, no nothing that God cannot solve. The writer says, be strong, be strong and courageous, and do not be afraid or be terrified. Because let me tell y'all something. Let me tell you something in this audience. This thing that we are suffering through now, this 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 episode that we're going through, this chapter that we're we're dealing with right now, this will pass. This is going to pass. This is this is. The, the, I'm so happy that the Bible teaches us that trouble doesn't last always. Uh, and, and then not only that, then I I read another scripture says that weeping may endure for a night, but joy will come in the morning. Yes, now, I, I wish I could tell you that it was going to be tomorrow morning. I wish I could tell you it was going to be. Friday. Friday morning. I wish I had the, uh, some kind of glass and I could look and tell you that it's going to be Saturday morning. I don't know what morning is, but I do know that the weeping will soon be over because joy is going to come in the morning. And so what we have to what we have to do while we're weeping, while we're weeping, we've got to weep, but we gotta be courageous. We gotta be, we cannot be terrified because joy is coming in the morning. And when the morning brings us our joy, we're gonna be better off because of the experience that we've already. See, you can't appreciate, you can't appreciate what, what you didn't have until you miss it. And you can't jump for joy until you get it back. And so, so weeping may endure for a night, but joy is coming in the morning. So I want to tell you where you are, where you're sitting right now, while you're listening, while you're watching. Just hold. He gave the great commission. You do remember at the close of his ministry, he gave the they gave the uh, uh, commission. He says, "Go out and teach them to observe things whatsoever I can." But the part that I, I want you to get here is the, the B part. Of it. He says, "Lo, I am with you." Oh. He says, Lo, I am with you. Can I spend a minute just like that? He says, Lo, I am with you. Okay? So the you is though any of us who trust in him, he's with us. How long is it? What is the duration? Is this a temporary, is this a temporary companionship? Is this a something that he's gonna do today and not do it tomorrow? Is this just something that he's gonna do while we're going through the virus? Are we going through all that? No, he doesn't say that. He does not stipulate. Matter of fact, he makes it crystal clear in the part he said, I am with you. How, how long is that gonna be? I'm with you what? Always. How, how, what, what, does, what does always mean? Even unto the end of the world. So if the world ends next week, we can count on the fact that God is going to be with us. His son has given his promise that he's going to be with us even until the end of the world. Now what does that really say? No matter what happens, no matter how it happens, no matter when it happens, no matter where it happens, no matter who it happens to, he says emphatically he said, without any hesitation, reservation, or doubt, he says, and I will be with you even until the end of the world. So if this virus lasts six more months, if it lasts two more years, if it, if it lasts five more years, he says in his word, right here, I'm looking at it at this computer, he said, I am with you. Somebody out that audience ought to say amen. I am with you. Amen. I'm with you until the end of the world. The world. All right. So, All right. so we ought to, and then, then he says, then he says in John 16 and 33, let's read what he said. He said, these things I have spoken to you. I've told you these things because you need to hear this. One thing we need to hear, everybody needs to stay calm. Everybody needs to hear that it's going to be all right. Mm -hmm. It's going to be all right. You see, he said, these things I've spoken to you, that you might have peace. Mm -hmm. Now, that sounds ludicrous, Pastor. How in the world can I have peace with all this going on? Mm -hmm. I don't have no income. I don't have no job. Money's tight. The things I'm used to and accustomed to, I'm, I'm not, I don't have the privilege. How can I have peace? Well, let me, let me tell you how you can have peace. When you have a right relationship with the Savior, 
When you make Jesus your Lord and Savior, and you invite him in, and you allow him to take control of your life, he says in his word, he says, my peace I give you. Uh -huh. Not as the world gives it. So he's saying to us that we, a lot of us think that our peace comes from money and our substance and our material thing. Can I tell y'all, if, if there was nothing going on in this country, if everything was ideal, could I tell y'all today that even with all the money in the world, peace is not something you can buy. Peace comes from knowing that you have a right relationship. Mm -hmm. And even though storms come, we serve, a, we serve a God that even when in the midst of our storms, He can give us peace. He, right. says, he said, in this world, now listen, listen, he says, well, listen to this. Jesus said, in this world, we are all in this world. Mm -hmm. We may not like what's going on in this world, but we're all in it, right? Yeah. yeah. He said, in this world, what did he say? Ye shall have what? Tribulation. Tribulation. So what he said, he didn't promise us that everything was going to always be all right. He didn't promise us that we wouldn't have setbacks. He didn't promise us that hard times wouldn't come. He didn't promise us that every day was going to be a good day. He did not promise us that everything was going to work the way we wanted it to work. Uh-huh. All right. He says in his word that ye shall have tribulation. In other words, there's going to be some down time. There, there's going to be some up time. There's going to be some time when it's great. There's going to be some time that's not so great. So we can just, even as children, as saved, as we're sanctified as we might be, knowing that Jesus is our Savior, he has promised us that we're going to have to have some trial and some tribulation in this life. But, but, but here, here's his advice. Listen to what he said. After he admonishes us, after he advises us, after he makes us aware that these things are He says, now, don't get so caught up in that that you lose focus on me because he said, be of good cheer. See, it's all in the mind. It's all in the mindset. See, some of us would rather gravitate to the negative aspects of things instead of gravitating to the positive. It's sort of like looking at a cup that's half full or half empty. It depends on your attitude. Some folks see the cup as half empty. Some people see it as half full. But, I, but, it, but whatever I, I'm going through, I always, no matter how bad things are, I always try to find a blessing because everything that happens to us, according to the Word of God, it says all things work together for the good of them that are called according to His purpose. Yeah. He says, be of good cheer. Why can I be of good cheer? How can I be of good cheer? What's my motivation? What's my inspiration for being of good cheer? Why should I be of good cheer? What proof do I have? What evidence do I have? Is there anything tangible that I can hold on to to prove the fact that I'm going to be all right? He said, be of good cheer. Why? Because he said, I have overcome. Mm -hmm. What you overcome, G? The world. So Jesus is saying, if I'm your Savior, yeah. and you are my child, and we have a right relationship because you are my child and because I've, I've, I've died for you and shed my blood for you that you might have a right, that you might have a right to eternal life. He said, I, this is the same Jesus that told us, I come that you might have life mm -hmm. and that you might have it on the level of abundance. So we, we, we're never alone. Amen. Even when we're in our houses, all by ourselves, we're never alone. Yes, yes. Amen. We're never alone. God, thank you for not allowing us to be alone. The next thing I want, the lesson that I learned is that when we are weak, He's strong. All right. Yeah. Let me tell you something. Life is tough. Anybody know that life is tough? Amen. Life will carry you through a lot of things. Mm -hmm. Ups. And down. And down. Life will toss you. Life will drive you. And as a result of that, sometimes we get weak. Yeah. yeah. Now, like all of you, and especially as a pastor and a leader of the church, always try to present a strong, strong image, you know, being strong. But I, I need to tell somebody out there in the audience, and somebody in this audience, somebody that's listening to us live, that sometimes I get weak. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I get weak. I, 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 do, I get weak because life is tough. Yes, it is. Life is tough. And sometimes life 
can be like a roller coaster. Mm -hmm. It can carry you so way up, and then it can carry you way down. And uh, so sometimes I'm weak, but guess what? When I'm weak, Ooh, thank God. When, when I'm weak, when I'm feeling frail, and I'm feeling, uh, you know, in a, in a, ineffective and insufficient, here's, the, here's what I find out, is that when I am weak, He is strong. Amen. He is, who, who, who are we talking about is He. Let's clarify, who are we talking about so the audience out here will know both. God. Right God is strong. Yeah. Amen. See, when we can't do for ourselves, when we can't make a way for ourselves, when we can't figure it out ourselves, we serve God is willing and ready to do what's necessary. That's why uh, Corinthians 12 and 10, 2 Corinthians 12 and 10 said, that's why I take pleasure in my weakness, this is Paul talking, uh, and in my insults, hardships and persecution and trouble that I suffer for Christ, for when I am weak, okay, then I am strong. Paul says, now this kind of, this don't really sound, when you look at this at the face back, he says, that's why I take pleasure. Now who takes pleasure? <laughs> who in their right mind takes pleasure in going through hardships. <laughs> Nobody does. Nobody. But because Paul had had his experience of hardships, which were many, he said, let's, let's look at the attitude and the mindset that he had. Because it's all psychosomatic. It's all in the mind. That's where it started. He said, that's why uh, he personalized. He said, I could be bitter. Right? Uh -huh. You know, life can make people, some people in life are bitter. Yeah. Because the hand that they've been dealt. Some people are bitter about the, the position they're in. But Paul says, rather than take that position, rather than have a sour attitude and a sour approach to life, he says, I take pleasure. It's right there, y'all. You got your Bible. 2 Corinthians 12 and 10 says, I take pleasure. Okay? In my weakness. Yeah. A lot of times I don't want nobody to know I'm suffering because, because when I'm weak, I'm in a vulnerable position. When I'm weak, I'm in a position that my foes might be able to take advantage of. Paul said, I take pleasure in my weakness and in my insult. And can I tell y'all something? That if, you, if you're a child of God, you can count on folk insulting you. Oh, yeah. You can count on folk insulting you. You can count on hardships. You can count on hardships. Just, serve, just being a child of God sometimes is a hardship. And in this kind of world that we live in now, just being a child of God creates hardships. Okay? Persecution. We know this is the same Paul. says, I will let nothing separate me from the love, nor height, nor persecution, none of it. He said, the trouble that I suffer for Christ. If you really are a bona fide believer, a bona fide Christian, somebody that's really committed to Christ, you can expect to suffer. Amen. You can expect to suffer. I don't care how sanctified, I don't care how holy you are, I don't care how much time you spend in the church, I don't care how much you know, activities and ministries you are in, you can expect to suffer. That's right. If you're a child of God. But then Paul gives us, he gives us a reason why he takes pleasure. He gives us a reason why he doesn't mind hardships and insult and persecution and trouble. Why? Because he says, I'm doing it for Christ. Amen. And can I tell you, uh, no matter how much preaching, teaching, singing, whatever we do, only the things we do for Christ will last. Okay? So he says, I take pleasure. Then he says, for when I am weak, sometimes we can't really figure out, we can't really understand, we can't really see how strong it is sufficient. Hallelujah, somebody. Amen. These were days when we, 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 we were praying just to make it through the day. How many of y'all, every day, I, I got up this morning and I, I went through my, 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 my prayer. I said, Lord, thank you for another day. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, thank you for my family. And thank you for my grandchildren. And, and thank you for the members of New Jerusalem. And, and the members of Rising Star. And, and, and thank you for all of those people who are on the front line. I appreciate that they're putting a lot. I said, Lord, thank you. We pray just to make it through the next five minutes because everything is so fluid, y'all. Right. Every time you turn CNN on, every time you turn Fox on, every time you turn MSNBC on, it's, it's a different thing. It's a different thing. So this is a very fluid situation. 
But even in all of this uncertainty, can I tell you something that I'm excited about? Can I tell you something? God is God. God oh, I don't know if y'all can hear, but God is constant. Yes, yes oh, he is. is. Yes, he is. Everything around us is changing. Mm -hmm. We're having to change our lives, the way we live, the how we socialize, how we go, and how we come, wearing masks, and all these other things, standing away from people, exhibit, it seems as if we're exhibiting antisocial behavior, but this is the kind of behavior we have to exhibit because if we don't, we put other people's lives. This is not this is not what we're accustomed to. But the one thing in all these things that are changing, God is constant. Yes, so I don't say amen for that. Amen. God is confident. Yes, he is. For the Bible said in Hebrew that God is the same with y'all. <laughs> yes, come on, come on, today. somebody. God, Hebrew said God is the same when yes. He's the same yesterday, yes, today, today, and He'll be the same tomorrow. Yes, sir. Nothing changes about Him. We change, but God <laughs> is ever the same. Right. Then the next thing we need to understand the trials, trials. Anybody ever had some trials? Let me raise my hand. Is anybody going through some trials right now? Possibly. Possibly if you're living this life, you're probably going through some trials right now. Hallelujah, somebody. Yes, sir. And everybody's trials are not the same. Hello. And can I tell you that trials are a season. Yeah. They're not a destination. All right. Did you hear what I'm saying? Trials are a season. Just like we have fall. Winter, hello somebody. Yeah. Now it's been kind of hard to distinguish. Here we are in April, and, <laughs> and uh, I don't know. I'm wondering what. I've been kind of wondering. I, I'm, I'm turning the heat on one minute in the house. Hello and the somebody. Air on the next. And then I'm turning the air on the next minute. I get cold. I get hot. Hello somebody. I wake up in the morning and it feels like fall. But yeah. but according to, uh, uh, to the way it really is supposed to be, we have a fall. We have a winter. Hello somebody. Spring. We have we have a spring. Hello. And, and we have a summer. Yes. But can I tell you, in life, we have good times. Hello, somebody. Yeah, I'm talking yeah. about season now. Yeah. We have bad times. Yeah. We have ups and we have downs, right? You're right, Pastor. These are just seasons, right? Yes, and everybody yeah. goes through their season. Yeah. It may be all right at your house, but it may be all hell breaking loose at my house. But don't, don't you rejoice because of what I'm going through. Because okay. your season is coming. Hello, somebody. So what it would be advisable while I'm going through my season, it would be advisable for you to pray for me. So yeah. that when you go to your season, yeah. I'll have the stamina and the strength to be able to pray for you while you're going through your season. Speak, Pastor. Oh, I wish I had somebody. It's uh, a, somebody yeah. say it's a season. It's a season. It's not a destination. <laughs> it's not where I'm going to end up. Hello, somebody. Yeah. It's just what I'm going through. Hello. Yeah. The, the writer said I go through the valley of the shadow of death, but yeah. I feel really it because it's just, a, it's just a pathway to where God is trying to get me. I wish I had somebody. Yes, on, I'll tell you what this ain't Sunday morning, but I tell you what, if I, I keep I keep acting right there, y'all gonna make me miss the hang in here. It says we'll get through it. Yeah. Somebody said we're gonna get through this. We are getting through this. We gonna get through this. Yes, sir. What, what, what nobody said. We go, God's people are we're gonna get through this. Yes, sir. The reason why we're gonna get through this because we know what to do while we're going through this. We yeah. gotta look to the hill from which coming our help because all of our help. Yes. Boy, oh, I tell you, I feel yeah. something here. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I, Thank I, I, you, Lord. All of our help comes from where? It comes from the Lord. Yeah. I'm almost finished, y'all. It says, when we're going through the deep waters, this, this is Isaiah 43 and 2 through 3 said, when we're going through the deep waters, and that's where we're going. Now, now I want to use the deep waters as a metaphor. Because what we're going through is deep waters. Nobody in this country has ever been through this before. Right. Right. You're right. There's no manual. Mm -mm. There's no book. Mm -mm. Uh, Nothing. There's no pamphlet. Okay. Maybe there'll be some books read. <laughs> I'm sure. <laughs> After this is all over. It's all over. <laughs> we'll have all kinds of manuals yeah. as to how to do this and how to do that. But right now, right now, the only book we got is the Word of God. That's it. That's it. And that's how we go, that's how we're gonna get through because we're gonna turn to the word of God, right? Yeah. Right. We're gonna see what God has to say because God has said in all of our ways. If we would acknowledge, acknowledge him, him. Yeah. that's it. If we would seek him, if we would tell the world that we're not we're not 
listening to them. We're not, we appreciate what they say in the White House. I don't want to be, I don't want to be anti god We appreciate what everybody's doing. But you know who I'm really listening to? I'm listening to what God has to say. Hello. Amen. See, God, 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 he got a view. He knows more than anybody else. He know all about Corona. Uh-huh. He know all about Ebola. <laughs> Hello, somebody. He already know about S-A-R-S. And he already got a word for him. All he wants us to do is get in his word. Yeah. Amen. This word has the end of it. See, his word says when we're going through difficult times, how many of y'all going through some difficult times? All right. Now, I'm telling you, I'm going through some difficult times. I really am. I'm going through some difficult times. But I'm not worried about it. Because God got my back. God got my back. Yes, sir. Deep, deep, God got my back. Yeah. Sister, God got my back. Deep, God got my back. Sister, God got my back. God's got my back. Yes, sir. And long as God is for me, right? The Bible says, long as God is for me, I'm I'm going to try to act right yeah. on the camera. I'm going to try to act right. I'm going to try to behave and act sophisticated and dignified and act like I know I got some good sense. But when God is on your back, you know God has got your back. When you understand no weapon, hello somebody, no weapon, formed Lord. against you. Hello. Hello. See, the enemy want to use this virus as a weapon against us. But yeah. the word of God said no weapon formed against no us. No weapon. Ain't gonna prosper. Uh -uh. Amen. When you said people are dying in the streets and people are dying and all that, they, yeah, well, that's that's a natural. The Bible said that we're gonna have to die of something. Hello, somebody. Yeah. I, I don't want to sound insensitive. People are dying. They, they didn't just start dying during the virus. All right. People were dying all over America before the virus came. Right. Death is inevitable because when Adam sinned in the against, hello somebody, when Adam sinned in the garden, when God told him not to eat of that tree of the knowledge of good and evil, the Bible said he promised us that we would die. Huh? The, only, the only tragedy about death, hello somebody, the only, it, it, the only tragedy about death is when we die outside of the law. Amen. But if we die in the law, we're going to go to a place where no virus, watch this y'all, watch this. We're going to go to a place where we yeah. don't have to be inoculated. We're going to go to a place where we don't have to be immunized. We're going to go to a place where there will be no none of this. No viruses, no nothing. We yeah. will be susceptible because we will have bodies that are sus not susceptible. And then if we just, this is just so hyper, this is so far out, but I'll say it anyway. Even if, which is really nothing to even say, but even if we were to get sick, mm -hmm. the Bible said there's a tree. Plant it. Plant it in the garden. Ah, thank you, Lord. And the leaves, hello somebody, <laughs> the very leaves of them yes. is good for the healing of a nation. Yes, sir. So we will need Dr. So-and-so. We will need certain so-and-so. Hello, somebody. Yeah. Yes, sir, <laughs> Dr. Jesus. That's exactly right. John 16 and 33 said, these things I have spoken to you that you might have peace. Again, I want you to know, be a good cheer, for I have overcome. So remember, trials are, repeat it after me, trials, trials. are a season, are a season. But, not a but not a destination. And so with me emphatically, we will, we will get, through it. get through it. Okay. All right, let's move on. The next thing I want you to know is that trials help us to grow. Yeah. If you notice in the picture, when I was putting this presentation together, I put that tree there. I wanted to know that that tree, when it grows, it runs roots everywhere. Mm -hmm. It helps to stabilize. Trials help us. Somebody said, well, I don't want to go through no trials. Mm -hmm. I, don't, I, don't, I don't want to go through no hardships. I, I, I want every day to be rosy. I, 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 don't, I don't want bad times. I, I, I want everything to be right. I want everything to just you know, like, go like I want it to go. Well, if you, if you everything went well all the time, you would never grow. Mm -hmm. You know, you have to, if you want to grow, you got to go through some stuff. See, every experience that we have, every experience we have, audience, makes us a better person. Amen. They, they sing a song, after all I've been through, mm -hmm. right, mm -hmm. I still have joy. Right. Amen. I'm stronger. Somebody sung that song because of what they've been saying. They say I'm stronger, right? Mm -hmm. I'm wiser. Yeah. 
And then, let me just kind of put some of this old Addis stuff, because you know, you just can't leave Grandma out of this. Because Grandma used to say, she had an old Addis, what will kill you, <laughs> will make you strong. Will make you strong. <laughs> Anybody know what I'm talking about? Hey, man. Hello, somebody. Hello. So it's, I want you to know, try to help us to grow in our faith. Hey, man. <clears throat> Hebrews 11 and 1 says, faith is the substance of things hoped for. Mm -hmm. And the evidence of things not seen. Right. Now, I don't have to have faith to believe that there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. I see ten pews ahead of me. It didn't faith, it didn't take any faith to believe it, because I'm seeing them. I'm looking right here. Even though my eyesight is not as what it used to be, I see it. But see what faith requires is that you have to believe in stuff without seeing it. All right. Okay? And so trials have to what? Uh, to strengthen our faith. Help us. Now, how do we come? How do we get faith? And we go down to, are they selling faith? Uh, let me see, because office, most of these stores close, but let me see. I'm going to see. Do super, I, I, I'm trying to run my mind down the aisles. I've been to Super One probably a lot this week. Let me see. I don't remember an hour what I had in the faith. Uh, let me see. I went, in, I went into Walmart. The 164, I go in there all the time. I can just about tell you where anything in there, but I can't remember no, off of Romans 10 that faith comes by what, y'all? Hearing Hear what? The word. The word, right? So the more you get in the word of God, right? Then what? The more your faith grows, right? And then let me tell you something about faith. Faith is not any faith that can't be tested, mm -hmm. is a faith that worth having. Right. Hello, somebody. I drive. I drive. Not Brian. I drive. Uh, I drive. I hope the police ain't listening to this, but uh, but I I, uh, I drive a Dodge. All right. And on the speed I'm with you, it says 125. All right. Now I'm not a lawbreaker. I, I, I don't I, I don't die, drive recklessly and I'm concerned. But I, I was in it one day, and I was going down the highway, and I was scoping out everybody, and there was nobody within close proximity of me. I said, you know what? Uh, they said that they dropped these trucks out of the sky and they rolled them over mountains and over ridges. I said, I want to see if this thing will really do what it said to do. <laughs> hello, somebody. Hello. I, I ain't the only one ever spared. Come on, come on. Hello, 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 hello. So I said, I want to see. I said, Lord, I said, if you'll protect me, just, I said, ain't nobody in the vicinity. There ain't, no, ain't nothing running. So I hit that accelerator. That old, that old truck kind of hesitated for a minute. Next thing I know, it, it was I almost lost control of it because it did what it said. It said it was going to do 125. It did every bit of it. All right. So what am I saying? What, and what am I doing? I'm not advocating you to break that. And I'm not telling you this to break the law. I'm trying to tell you that a faith that's not worth, that cannot be tested, is a faith that's not worth having. So every now and then, God has to send some, some things to test our faith in order for us to grow. All right. Dear brothers and sisters, James 1 and 2, I'm going to read it from a different verse. It says, Dear brothers and sisters, when trouble come your way, how many of y'all know trouble going to come your way? We're almost at the end of this, y'all. You better be there. How many of y'all know that trouble is going to come your way? Yes, sir. Yeah, it's coming. And let me tell you something. Trouble long before we got GPSs, you know, most of us got new cars, got GPS and navigate. We got telephones and we can we can we can put in an address and it can tell us it's precisely how to get there, right? Right. And thank God for technology. Okay, because I love technology because I go places sometimes and I don't know where I'm going. And I just talk to that little sweet lady. She's a I got a little sweet lady that rides with me everywhere I go. I don't know her name and she don't know mine. But she's the sweetest little lady. She don't get upset with you. She don't get impatient with you when you get lost. She said, go down and turn. She says so softly. She don't scream. She don't holler. Go down 500 feet and turn around. Hello. But can I tell you, long before the navigation was in play, trouble already had a navigator because trouble knows where you live. Yeah. Do you hear what I'm saying? Trouble know where you work. Yes, sir. Trouble know where your children go to school. Hello, somebody. Trouble know what church you attend on Sunday morning. Trouble know your preacher. Hello, somebody. Trouble know your pastor. Trouble know your congregation. Hello, somebody. Trouble knows everything about you. And sooner but later, trouble is coming your way. All right. Well, how can I substantiate? How can I verify? Well, let's go to the Word again. Let's, don't, don't, don't believe what I say. Let's go to the Word. The Word says, Job said in his writing that a man born of a woman. Hello, somebody. Yeah. Is there anybody here born of a woman? I know we got all these modern day families now. 
I don't, we won't touch it, but I'm going to go ahead and touch it. We got all these so-called family that, we, that we're trying to get away from the blueprint. But let me tell you that, that, that a man born of a woman, hello somebody, is only of a few days, hello somebody. But you can expect some what? Trouble. He said, look what James said. He said, now, when consider it, he said, when trouble comes, consider, this is a new international way. He said, consider it an opportunity. Every time trouble comes your way, you ought to look at it as an opportunity to give God the praise. Amen. See, it don't, it don't take much to praise God when you got, let me see if I got something. When you got money. Yeah, yeah. Hello, somebody. You got all the things you need. It, it don't, yeah. listen, listen, let me put this back down. I can, I, praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. <laughs> Yeah. Praise the Lord. Jesus, Heavenly Father. When I got something. Yes, sir. When everything is going all right, it don't take nothing to muster enough energy to say, praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. But can I praise him? <laughs> when, when, the child, when the children get in trouble. Can I praise him when my marriage is on the rock? Can I praise him when things are going sour in my life? That's when I know. And so what James said, he said, now in the original text, he said, consider all joy when you fall into diverse temptation. Oh, yeah. Hmm. He says, he said, well, you know that when your faith is tested, hello, somebody, your faith going to be tested, y'all. Mm -hmm. Tested. Now, do you know that everything you buy, watch this, is tested? Oh, yeah. Now, the next time you buy something, I want you to get it, get it out. And there, there should be a UAL, somewhere on that problem, there ought to be a UAL listing. Mm -hmm. Now what that UAL listing said is long before they put that product on the shelf, mm -hmm. it had to go through a series of tests. Yeah. yeah. Hello, somebody. Right. See, the government said that they can't sell you a faulty piece of nothing, right? right. So they, they sent it to a laboratory, hello, and they test it under, they put it through severe weather situation, they, they bang it, they drop it, hello somebody, because they're going to see how these things will endure during the course of that. So what, what God does in our life, he allows us to be dropped, hello somebody, can I just be frank, he allows us to be banged, hello somebody, he allows us to have hot days, good days, bad days, just to see if our faith, yeah, yes sir, he says when, you, when your faith is dead, your endurance has a chance to grow. Now, when I was in the military, I'm a military guy. I was in the military for about six years. And uh, when I got there, I was, when I first got there, I was so out of shape. Mm. I couldn't run two blocks, even as a kid, I couldn't run two blocks without <laughs> huffing. <laughs> huffing. And even now, as in this presentation, as you really paying close attention, you can tell that uh, I have my highs and lows. <laughs> But uh, one thing they taught us is when we went to when we went to what we call basic training, they they started making us exercise and they started running us and they start and the whole purpose was that to build some endurance, okay? Because the more we ran, the more we could run, okay? It's called endurance. So when trials come, hello somebody, and they will come. It ain't a matter if, it's a matter of when. Hello, somebody. Mm -hmm. Don't let nobody tell you because you say it. Somebody says, well, I got saved, man. I came to the Lord. I, I, gave, I gave the preacher my hand. I gave God my heart. And, 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 and I'm saved now. And I'm sanctified. And I, I'm, 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 I'm filled with the precious Holy Ghost. I, I've been baptized by water and fire. Mm. And that's all beautiful. That's all great. I, I, I congratulate you. I congratulate you. Welcome to the, welcome to the house of God. And welcome to the family of God. But let me tell you something. You're going to have some trouble. And some trials. Amen. He said, he says, he said, now, your endurance has a chance to grow. He said, let it grow. And when your endurance is fully developed, you will have perfect and complete and you'll need nothing. Now, what he's really saying, that when these trials come, let them have their way. I promise y'all, it's out there in all this. That when this is all over with, it's going to be some people out there. I got two more points. We're going to quit y'all. It's going to be some people out there that's going to have a greater appreciation mm -hmm. for who God is. Amen. Amen. 
People now want to go to church. You know, let me tell y'all something. People that ain't been trying to get in the church, now they're fussing about they can't get here. Uh, and we're going to talk about we're going to let so-and-so in and so-and-so. Why is it you're going to let him in and let her in and you don't let me in? Well, there was an opportunity where we all could get in. All right. And we all could get in and we weren't trying to fight to get in. Now we're fighting to get in. That's good. Keep on fighting. Keep on fighting. I want you to keep that zeal. Keep that... Keep that desire to come because when this is all over, yes, sir. we need to fill all of these pews. All right. And give God some praise for bringing us through. Sometimes when you, you're on the flat on your back and under, under a lot of weight and in the circumstance, life can, life can put you on your back. And when you're on your back, there's only one direction you can look. And that's up. My next point, we're going to move on here. My next point is that. So remember, trials, trials are going to come. That's 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 the point of life. Yeah. Okay. The next thing, waiting is active and not passive. I don't know explain what that means. Let's look to the Word of God and see. Psalm 40 and 31 said, "But they who wait on the Lord." Mm -hmm. How many y'all are waiting on the Lord? That's all we really can do. That's all. Mm -hmm. Until they, until something happens, that's all we can do. It's waiting. Somebody say, I'll be glad when it's over. I will too. Yeah, yeah. I'll be glad when we can go back to the restaurant. I will too. I'll be glad when our children can go back to school so we can get some peace. I will too. <laughs> yes, sir. Huh? But there ain't nothing I can do about it right now. All I can do is what? Wait. wait. See, I'm a, I'm a member of the Weight Watcher Club. Not the W-E- I-G-H-T club. I'm not part of that way, way group. I'm a part of the W-A-I-T group. All right. Because uh, Isaiah 40, 31 said, but they, hello somebody, who are they? Those who trust God. Hello somebody, in hard times. Those, those who've learned these lessons about heart. They that wait, hello somebody, and it takes patience. Yes, sir. To wait. Everybody's in a hurry. Hello, somebody. You, you, you know, everybody's in a hurry. Everybody's always waiting to the last minute to do something. But the scripture said, but they that wait for who? The Lord. The Lord. What? See, 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 you got to wait on the Lord because his time is not our time. That's right. His way is not our way. You can't rush God. Now I'm rushing. I'm going to rush through the rest of this presentation so, so I don't lose your, your uh, 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 attention. But uh, I, you can't rush God. Okay, he said, but they that wait on the Lord shall renew what? Their strength. Their strength. Yeah. The strength that you already have, mm -hmm. that's just about to run out, he going to do what? He going to renew it, right? They shall what? Mount up with wings. I wish, I wish I had the time to really talk about how when the eagle really gets ready, it's one of the most beautiful things. Uh, Eye-catching, captivating things is when that, that that eagle gets down, that old bald eagle, and he, he gets down and he gets ready to before he ever takes flight, he has to mount up. Hello, somebody. And he says we're gonna mount up with wings and like an eagle. Eagle is. He said we, and we shall run. Hello, somebody. Hello. Now I, I, if I, I ain't gonna do it right here because I might pass out. But if I were to run, y'all might not even see that wall over there. But if I if I took off here. At full speed, somebody would have to get a respirator <laughs> or a breathing machine or some oxygen there. Because I would, I would be over there. I'd be, I'd be exhausted. But the Lord said that we wait on Him. Hello, somebody. Is there anybody out there waiting? You gotta wait. He said, if you wait on Him, right? Right? He said, you gotta mount up, then you gotta run, and you will not be what? Weary! They shall walk and not faint. I hope I'm still within the caption of the screen here. I'm walking. I'm walking. Oh, I'm doing pretty good. Hey. <laughs> I'm way close to him. He said, You shall walk. But all of this happened the mounting up, the walking, the running, and not being faint hinges upon the fact that you got to do what? You got to wait on the Lord. The condition is you got to what? Wait, wait on, on who? Lord. Wait on Donald Trump? Oh, no. No. Wait on Mr. McConnell? Nah. 
Wait on Nancy Pelosi. So I want to be frank because I, I, I may have some Republicans listening to me. But wait, wait on, 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 on uh, what, whatever his name. No. Wait on who? The Lord. Wait on the Lord. Why? Because he will what? Renew our strength. We'll be able to do things that we couldn't do because we're waiting on him. Because we understand that waiting is active. Hello, somebody. And not passive. Waiting is not passive, it's, act, it's making a choice. Watch this, y'all. It's making a choice. What is your choice today? Every one of you got to make a choice. We've got one more bullet and we're going to be through. Every one of you got to make a choice. What is your choice? I, I choose. You want to know what my preference is today? I choose to trust God. Mm -hmm. See, the enemy wants me to doubt God. Uh -huh. The enemy wants to say, well, where's your God? And I just, I just love it when the pro pronosticators and the atheists and all those people who don't believe in God, they just love times like this because the first thing they want to throw in your face, well, where is your God? Where is the God that love you so much? Why is it that God allowing you? Well, God is the same place he's always been. <laughs> huh? He ain't moved. It, it, the, the problem is, we moved from here. Hello. Yeah. Now, the problem is, God has been stationary. Hello. But we keep backing up, and the farther we get away from God, the better, the worse things become in our lives. Yeah. yeah. So we choose to wait on the Lord. When you wait on the Lord, you can maintain your hope. All right. Then, lastly, the last thing I want to teach you is that we can rest in the assurance that God has a plan. And his plan for us is good. This is my Amen. final point, y'all, before I close this out. We can rest assured. Go on and sleep at night, y'all. I know, I know some of you. Some of you. My wife has been in Houston for two weeks, and I, I ain't slept now night since she's been gone. Uh, but uh, go to sleep at night and get you a good rest because we have the assurance. I know somebody. We have the guarantee. We have God's word. And you know what God said about his word. His word is so good. And he said, I, 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 I don't know, sister, can you, can you, y'all probably can't say it, he said before, a jot or a tittle of my word pass away. Uh, Come true, heaven and earth. What am I doing? Heaven and earth will pass away. So God's word is so important until he marks. Hello, somebody. His, his, the, the truthness of his word. He said, if you come up to be alive, heaven and earth will pass away. Okay? Mm -hmm. So God has a plan for us. And it's a good plan. I thank God for the stimulus checks. Thank you. I haven't got mine yet. <laughs> Me, the best. But uh, I thank God for the stimulus checks. Hope you got yours. Hope you give your 10% out of it. You know, when you get your stimulus check. That's right. Uh, wherever church you go to, you make sure that the first 10% of it, uh, go ahead and set aside for God. Hey, because you said it was the government. No, it wasn't the government. God moved upon the hearts of those people to look out for you. So God has a plan for you, okay? Thank God. When you waiting on test results, and some of us probably have to wait on test we, 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 can, we can sleep peace knowing that God has brought us, you know, whatever you're going through. Some of y'all are going through sickness. Some of y'all are having hard times with health problems. But uh, you can, when you, when you understand that God has a plan for you and it's good, you can sleep at night. Amen. And meanwhile, we need to sleep because God is already up. Right. The Bible says in the book of Psalms, He that keepeth Israel. Y'all read that. I know y'all read Bible scholars. Y'all read that. It's in the New Testament, the Scripture. Uh, I mean, the Old Testament, if you didn't turn that page out, it's, it's still in there. Just get some of that dust off that Bible that you can't find. You say, well, I can't find my brother. That, that's, that's that book that's I got all that dust on it. If you take that dust off, or if you'll look at it, you'll see that it said, but he that keepeth Israel, listen to what he said, neither slumber nor sleep. So what I learned a long time ago, if I got a problem, I'm going on the bed. Amen. Because ain't no need of all of us being up at night. Yeah. Because God already on duty. Amen. He that keepeth Israel. Hello. That today Israel is us. We the church today are the Israel of right now. He that keepeth Israel neither slumbers nor sleep. Right. Right. So if God is on the night watch, the day watch, the midday watch, let him have it. Well, he got it. He got it. He got it. 
For he knows his plan. Jeremiah 29 and 11 said, For God knows his plan for us. God has a plan for us. This, this coronavirus fits into the plan. Mm -hmm. This ain't just no coincidence. God already knew this was coming. Oh, yeah. In 2019, he knew it was coming. In January, when the government knew it, he knew it was coming, okay? But he has a plan. There's a plan in all of this, okay? And hopefully, we'll get it. Some people get it, some won't. What is your plan for? Plans to prosper us. God Almighty. Amen. I'm just about to leave. God has a plan to prosper us. Ain't that exciting? Isn't that what excited about? God has a plan. Anybody out there broke? Hello, I thank you, sister. Yeah. yeah. But God has a plan to not only from a material perspective, God's going to prosper us spiritually. Then He's going to prosper us physically. You see, He has a plan for us. A plan for our future. A plan for our future. I want to I want to thank Sister Dodson. I want to thank uh, uh, Deacon Haggerty. Uh, I want to thank uh, Chris Choice. Uh, I want to thank all of them today for uh, their work and their due diligence to make this broadcast uh, possible. Because without their help, without their aid, and without their assistance, we could not bring this uh, uh, broadcast to you every week. And we look forward to bringing this broadcast to you every week at this particular time. So we ask that you would pray for us. Uh, pray that God will continue to give us a word in these fluid times and these hard times that we might be able to encourage you. As I close, I want to remind you that stop focusing on the virus and start focusing on the scripture. And the scripture says, I will look. And I'm looking upward now, y'all, to symbolize what I'm trying to convey to you today. I will look to the hills. For with cometh my help. For all of somebody said all in the audience right here in the audience. All of my help. All of my help comes from the Lord. Comes from the Lord. God bless you. Let us close with the word of prayer. Lord, we thank you now. I thank you for the members of the New Jerusalem Church. I thank you for the members of the Rising Star Church. I thank you for the audience at large. I thank you for those who have taken time out of their busy schedule to be a part of this production today. I pray, I hope, it is my utmost desire that something today has been said, demonstrated, illustrated, that will give hope in this time of despair, that will give courage in this time of fear, that will give us stability in this time of instability. I pray, God, that somebody will be moved by the message today, by the Bible study today, that somebody will move to get closer. I pray that somebody that might be listening may not know Jesus and the free part of their sins. I pray right now, Lord, over this airway right now, that you would touch their hearts and touch their minds and that they might surrender and understand that they need you more than they ever needed you in their life. I pray that you're saved right now, Lord. Saved right now because you can do it even in the midst of of this production you can say right now. Do it right now, Lord. And we give you praise, God. We give you the honor. And we thank you for this opportunity. Amen. Amen. God bless you. God keep you. Have a great day. Amen.